Hello and welcome. My name is Thomas Little, I'm a SQL Server DBA, and I've been a DBA now for about 10 years. Today we're going to talk about how to alter partition schemas and partition functions. Uh, if you watched my previous video, Partitioning Tables in SQL Server 2008 R2, we use the example of a DaVentureWorks database uh, to partition the tra transaction history table by data for 2007 and 2008. In this demonstration, we are going to now add 2009 data to the transaction history table, and we're going to want to partition that into its own file group, and we're going to alter the partition schema and the function in order to do that. And it's going to be very quick, very easy, with no data copying, anything like that. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is just verify the data that's actually in our transaction history table. And by running this particular query here, I see that there's 2007 and 2008 data. But we're going to add 2009 data to that. We're going to take a thousand rows from the 2008 data and just insert it into the transaction history table, just as our sample of data. So I have here a query that will insert data into the transaction history table. Let's do this. We're going to insert a thousand rows. We're going to take the transaction history date by year and add one from 2008 data. So we're going to run this. We should get a thousand rows and we do. And now if we go back to our row count we should see 2009 data. So there's a thousand rows of 2009 data in our transaction history table. So now we're ready. Well, actually, let's go and view the partitions here. Let's do that. So in this query here I run, I see that uh, we have 2007 file group and a 2008 file group. And that contains, again, data from 2007 and 2008. But there's what happens to the data if it doesn't fall within that group? Well, it actually goes into another file group that you specified during the wizard in partitioning the table. In our example, we just chose the primary file group, but you can actually choose any file group you want. So you'll see here that the thousand rows that we inserted of 2009 does not fall within the lower and upper boundaries of these file groups and so it was just put into the primary file group. Okay, But we're going to take these thousand rows and we're going to create another file group and put those thousand rows in there and we're going to do it very quick and very easy. The first step in doing that is actually creating the file groups and data files. So we're going to alter the database and we're going to create a new file group called Transaction History 2009. And just to be sure, we're just going to hit OK, make sure it created. It was, and now we're going to create a data file for that group. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to associate that data file with this file group here. And we're going to create the NDF file. Ah, sorry. <clears throat> Let's choose the right date. So we're going to click OK. So now we have the file group created. The next step is actually altering the partition schema. Now we're going to alter the example that we set, had set up before was a partition schema called SCH transaction history. And we're going to use this particular T-SQL statement to tell the partition schema that the next used partition, I'm sorry, the next used file group should be the new file group that we just set up. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And we'll do it, make sure we do it in the right. So that was completed successfully. So now the next file group that will be used is 2009. The next function that we're next T SQL statement we're going to provide or we're going to run is the alter partition function uh, DDL. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the 2009 date range to that 
partition function. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and run this. And that was completed successfully. So now what we should see, I have a query here that tells us row counts by partitions. If we run this, we should now see our file group of 2009 data and our row count is now 1,000. You'll see that it was moved out of the primary and into the 2009 data because it fits in that range. Now that was really quick. The one thing that you have to understand about partitioning is that it doesn't actually move the data. It's pointers that it moves to access the data. And that's really important because it makes operations like moving data in and out of file groups extremely easy and doesn't really impact uh, business, uh, business uh, reports or applications, anything like that. Uh, it's, it's basically pointers that you move in and out of there. So that's been the demonstration. If you have any questions, you can please email me at tlittle30 at gmail.com. That's T-L-I-D-D-L-E, the number 30, at gmail.com. Thank you.